Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So a lot of people right now are buying the DJI Air 2S and for good reason. It's DJI's latest drone and it's a pretty dope drone. But a lot of people are also struggling to figure out how to get the best footage or the best picture out of the DJI Air 2S. So today I'm going to walk you guys through what the best settings are for this little beast so you guys can get the most cinematic banger footage out of this drone. Also, I want to say that it's not all about what drone you have. It's all about what you do with it. So most of these tips and most of these settings will actually apply to all DJI drones as long as they have the functionality. So regardless of what you're flying with today, you're probably going to get something out of this video. So stick around. Let's first talk about the photo settings. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tap that little icon in the bottom right corner of your screen that says auto. And this is going to switch your camera to what DJI calls pro mode, which is basically just manual mode. So now you can manually change the parameters and the settings of your camera. So the aperture for this camera is actually fixed at f2.8. So you can't do anything about that. So you don't need to worry about that. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your ISO and your shutter speed and you're going to want to toggle that little switch that pops up when you tap on each of them and switch them into manual mode. Now for ISO on drones, I try to keep it at 100 and just leave it at that. If you need to go above that, I would never go above 400, but generally you just want to keep it at 100. And then for photos, you just want to play around with the shutter speed. You want to make it faster or slower until you get the look that you're going for. Generally, I try to keep my shutter speed on drones high, anything above 1 over 125, just to get the sharpest photo possible. Next up, tap on that little area on the screen that says JPEG and change that over to JPEG plus RAW. Now, what that's going to do is that every time you take a photo with your drone, it's going to create two copies of that photo, one in JPEG and one in RAW. For me personally, I only ever use the raw version. You just have a lot more flexibility in post when you're editing and you have a lot more things that you can do with the actual photo. So I would also recommend that you guys use raw, but you also have the option to use that JPEG image just in case you're feeling lazy or you don't feel like editing and you just want to use the photo that's straight out of the drone. So this function will give you the option to do both of those things. The Air 2S also introduces manual focus. So the way to activate that is that you'll see a little icon that says AF next to the capture button, which stands for autofocus. If you tap that, the camera will then switch over into manual focus. And if you scroll your finger over that little MF, um, it's going to start changing the focus of the camera. So you have the option to use that. I personally think that DJI drones do an amazing job of autofocusing. So I always just leave it at autofocus for me personally. Okay, now let's hop into the camera menu and look at aspect ratio. So by default, the aspect ratio is three by two. And that's what you're generally going to want to use, especially if you're taking photos for Instagram or for yourself personally, that's going to be the most standard crop that you're used to. When you want to use 16 by nine, that's when you're looking to get those really wide photos. And I would only really use 16 by nine if you're looking to take photos for YouTube specifically, or you just want that wider look. But generally I keep my aspect ratio at three by two. I also like to turn on my histogram. Now this is a bit of a personal preference, but I highly recommend that you guys all do this. And without getting into too much what a histogram is and how to read one, it basically tells you if your image is properly exposed or not. So just to give you guys an example, sometimes you're out, you're flying your drone and there's going to be glare on your remote and on your phone. And you might not actually specifically see the exact image that the drone is seeing right now in terms of exposure. So what a histogram will do is it'll tell you, hey, all the data is in the right place or it's not. And this way you can adjust your shutter speed or your ISO or whatever you need to, to try and get that image properly exposed. Basically, you just want all the data in the histogram to be kind of in the middle and sort of balanced out. You don't want to skew to one side or the other. 
I'll probably make a YouTube video in the future explaining in more detail how to read histograms, but for now, that's all you need to know. For grid lines, I like to turn on the tic-tac-toe grid and the center point, and this is all personal preference. I just like those specific grid lines for when I'm framing my shots or trying to figure out what the middle of that is, so you guys can do whatever you want. In terms of peaking, I leave that off and I leave white balance to automatic. I find that DJI drones do a way better job than I could at either of those things, so I just let the drone take care of that part. Okay, so that's it for the photo side of things. Now let's flip over to video. Now, a lot of things on the video side are also gonna be the same as the photo side, like pro mode, trying to keep your ISO always at 100, auto focus, auto white balance, but with video, you have the option to choose your resolutions and your frame rates. Now, what I would say personally is that if you're not planning to slow down the footage in post at all, I would always record at 5.4K at 30 frames per second on the DJI Air 2S. And the reason for that is, is that it A, gives you the highest resolution possible that you can get out of any consumer level drone today. And also you're gonna be able to crop into post without losing any quality if that's something that you're into. Now, if you're someone that's planning on slowing the footage down in post, I would always record at 4K 60. That's the highest quality at a slow motion rate that you can get on the DJI Air 2S and you can slow it down up to 40%, which is awesome. Okay, cool. So once you've picked your frame rate and your resolution, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is adjust your shutter speed. Now, the rule of thumb to get the most cinematic motion blur out of your video is that you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So if you're recording at 60 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be one over 1 20th of a second. If you're recording at 30 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be one over 60th of a second. Now, if you do this and your image is way too bright and overexposed and you can't see anything, you're basically gonna need ND filters. Now, if you don't know what ND filters are, how to use them, don't worry, I'm gonna be making a video really soon on what ND filters you should get for the DJI Air 2S, what strength you should use, how you can put them on on this drone, the whole spiel. So you're gonna have A to Z on ND filters for the Air 2S. And you're not gonna wanna miss that video, so make sure you guys sub to the channel and hit that bell notification to make sure you don't miss it. Now let's hop into the camera settings for video. So for video format, you're gonna wanna keep that at MP4, which is the default, even if you're on a Mac, just because it's the most widely compatible format across all computers. In terms of color, you wanna change that over to D-Log. This is the number one reason to buy the Air 2S because you're getting that 10-bit color profile and the extremely flat profile that D-Log provides, which gives you that higher dynamic range. Now, in order to use this profile, you're gonna to need to know how to color grade. If you don't know how to do this, I would highly recommend that you guys take this opportunity to learn because it's gonna take your footage to a whole new level. And in terms of codec, by default, it's already set at H.265, and that's what you guys wanna keep it at. According to DJI, it actually compresses the file without losing any quality or any detail, so there's no reason to use H.264 on this drone. You should only be using H.265. And in terms of all the other settings in this menu, they're pretty much the same as photo. Now, I also wanna talk about a few more features on this drone that'll get you some banging cinematic shots. So the first one is called Master Shots, and this is exclusive to the Air 2S. No other DJI drone can do this. And basically what it does is that it stitches a bunch of quick shots together and makes a mini movie for you. So the way to activate Master Shots is that if you tap on that little menu icon which brings up photo and video, there's also an option for Master Shots there. So you tap that, you click on your subject, whatever you want it to be, and then you kind of just click go, and the drone will do this automatically. Now, this does take a little bit of time, so you wanna make sure you have enough battery life to get your master shot in. Now, how I personally use master shots is that I don't take that full clip that the drone creates for me and I just dump it somewhere as B-roll. I go through it to see which shots that I like that the drone has taken, 
and I cut those shots out specifically to use for my B-roll. And I think that's how everyone, including you guys, should be using master shots to get more cinematic footage by doing a little bit less work. Next up, we have Active Track 4.0. And on the DJI Air 2, Active Track 2.0 was my favorite feature. So Active Track 4.0 has been a real game changer for me in terms of how good it is at tracking a subject. Now, the way to activate this is that you draw a box around your subject on your screen, and that's gonna focus the camera on that specific subject and start tracking them. You're also gonna have three menu items sort of pop up at the bottom, and that's how you know Active Track has been activated. And the three menu items you're gonna see is um, Active Track, Spotlight, and Point of Interest. Now, within Active Track, you have the option to pick Parallel Tracing. And I think that's the one that you should do if you're looking to get cinematic footage of the drone flying next to somebody. I use that one a lot and I think you can get a lot of cool footage. Also in Spotlight, the drone is going to track you no matter where you walk without moving. So you have the ability to manually control the flight of the drone while the drone keeps the subject in frame and completely centered. So I think you guys want to take some time to practice some moves that you like around subjects and use this feature a lot because you can definitely get a lot of cinematic shots. Now my personal favorite part of Active Track 4.0 is the point of interest feature. Now what this does is that it basically orbits around the subject that you've chosen forever at the speed that you've chosen. So you can get a lot of really cool shots of landscapes and the best part about point of interest is that you can still control the height and the distance of the drone while it's orbiting. So while the drone is flying around you, you can slowly push the stick back and up to reveal the landscape around you as you're walking. And I think you can get some really, really cool shots. I also recommend that you guys do this in cine or tripod mode because the drone is going to fly the smoothest in that mode and you're going to be able to get really, really smooth cinematic bangers. And that's it for the best settings for the Air 2S guys. So hopefully this video helped you out and you can go out and start filming some banging footage with your brand new drone. If you guys like this video as always, smash that like button. It really helps out with the algorithm and all those annoying things that help push your videos out. If you guys like drones and photography or just me in general, subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. That's all I have for this video though. I'll see you guys in the next one and until then, keep creating.